Twitch.tv is quite possibly the only website where I'm able to see an ex-Overwatch player getting banned on a GTA 5 RP server while simultaneously watching a man gamble more money than I'm ever going to earn in my lifetime oh, in an oh. online casino while simultaneously watching a grown woman lick a silicone ear while simultaneously watching a little person get a pentakill in League of Legends, at the same time, I can also watch an 8-foot giant getting roasted by his chat room. In 2005, in Connecticut, Justin Kahn was studying at Yale University in psychology and physics, and he teams up with Emmett Shear, and both of them, they form Kiko Software, which is basically an online calendar. In 2022, it doesn't sound like a revolutionary idea, but let me remind you, it's 2005. The most popular flip phones are Motorola flip phones. Nokia was still relevant at the time. The most popular song right now is Gwen Stefani, Hollaback Girls. And as well, most computers used to look like this. Unfortunately, their online calendar wasn't a huge success. So basically, they just scrapped the project and they sold their software on eBay for over $250,000. The year is now 2006, and in the digital media industry, every network is pumping out reality TV shows left and right. Real Desperate Housewives, Next, Survivor, The Bachelor, Big Brother, you name it. All of these shows were really easy to create because all you would need would be one, maybe two cameras, a boom mic, a producer in the back making sure that everything was going smoothly, the actors, and a location. No big script like in the movies or TV shows at the time, just normal people like you and I, some type of context, and a cash prize at the end. Justin Emmett took a look at the reality TV show scene and said, why not host a website where people can livestream themselves doing cool things because people are awesome, and that's exactly what they did. So they decided to cut the middleman, and both of them, they created Justin TV on March 19th, 2007. Justin Cam was the first streamer on the platform and he had a camera on top of his head and he would stream everything from going to bed, going to the restaurant, going to the library, you name it. It was a cool twist on the whole reality TV show boom just because of the unpredictability. Nothing was scripted, you had no clue what was going to happen next and also it was such a revolutionary idea where you could type to someone and the person would respond to you in real time through video. It was amazing. Now, if you wanted to stream on Justin TV, it's not like today where you just download OBS with one click, put in your stream key, have a wish list at the bottom of your stream so that your sims can buy a blue Yeti microphone or a maid outfit. You have to have the correct knowledge on how to use a flash media encoder, quick time broadcast, which was known to crash some of your streams, and even XSplit, which came out a couple years later, which was known to be very, very demanding on two core CPUs back in the day. Also, there weren't a hundred different videos on clickbait titles telling you how to stream, how to become a millionaire through streaming. The only thing I could find was one video, and it was a guy showing you how to stream on Justin TV on a MacBook. Yeah, the website was cool and all, but there were a couple issues with it. The first one was that Justin was the first ever person to ever get swatted on the live stream before, which was absolutely horrible. The second issue was that still today, if you were to live stream on Twitch, you'd have to put yourself on a category. But if we take a look at the categories back then, there were obviously two categories that are very problematic. The entertainment category and the sports category. In the sports category, people would rebroadcast sporting events. Even the UFC had to step in and they sued Justin TV because people were just restreaming fights. And then people in the entertainment category would just rebroadcast TV shows and movies. But honestly, in 2022, nothing's changed. Despite all of that, the gaming category just kept growing and growing in popularity. So in June of 2011, Justin TV decided to move all of their content creators, everyone working in the gaming category, and they all moved them to a separate platform called Twitch TV. Oh yeah, the Craigasm emote you use whenever you click on a girl's hot tub stream? Yeah, that's the face of Craig, an OG Justin TV streamer. Oh, XQC let out a huge juicy fart? Yeah, that's the face of Dan Evan, another OG Justin TV streamer that moved to Twitch. I have oh, a girlfriend. What is that? Did Sorrel just say that he has a girlfriend, but she doesn't go here? Yeah, the Kappa emote? That's Josh Asino. He would work. Okay, 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 okay. You get it. Basically, everyone who switched over from Justin TV to Twitch were added to the global emote list. We can't talk about Twitch without talking about the chat. One of the reasons why the gaming section was just so much bigger than the other sections on Justin TV where it had to be branched off into its own thing is that 
the questions were just so much more pertinent than in the other category. You could always ask how that person got that item in WoW, why that pro player decided to use that item in League of Legends, and also ultimately you could always ask a lot of questions which would make you into a better player whenever you would game yourself. Also the chat was such an essential tool to develop a sense of community where a bunch of people could laugh at you and with you, which was amazing. The first real emote meta used to be founded by I'm a Cutie Pie, which used to be a pro ADC for Dignitas in League of Legends, and he used to call his community the Dong Squad, which started the use of all the Japanese emoticons when you put them together would make some type of emote. That was the real first emote meta just because people were tired of using the global emotes, right, which used to be the faces of Justin TV that moved over to Twitch. People didn't want to use sub emotes because you had to pay $5. So once Twitch chat got a hold of all these Japanese emotes, no chat was safe from them. Whether it was for raise your dongers, ameno, let's build a ladder chat, every chat would have the, all these Japanese emotes and it would remain the same for the next three years until- oh my Third party extensions came into the meta and still in 2022, it changed Twitch chat for the best and forever. You weren't limited to all these Japanese emotes anymore. You could type a message like a word and that word would transfer over into a PNG message just thanks to BTTV, FFZ and most recently until last year, 7TV. When talking about Twitch, we obviously can't forget about the golden era of Twitch, which started in 2016 and ended around 2019. Also, for a lot of Twitch users, myself included, these three years solidified their love for Twitch. The golden Twitch era started when Greek would snipe Tyler1 in H1Z1, and honestly, it started as soon as their friendship blossomed when they both played Arma 3 RP, and over the next three years, we would see the best streaming duo the platform has ever seen. After, we got the Pokemon Go meta, where Twitch created the IRL section, which started the real-life CX days, where Ice Poseidon would stop playing RuneScape, would put a camera on his chest, and then just livestream himself just walking around in Los Angeles. You can't forget about the Mitch Jones and Trainwreck duo, where they would just argue the whole stream. Obviously, we can't forget XQC with the old red headphones, or the best content we've ever seen, honestly, was XQC with the XQC balloons at the back. Because usually on Twitch, either you go see two different types of streams. The first type of stream would be a pro player showing you how to play the game, but with no personality. Or you would either go see someone who was terrible at video games, but he has a great personality and a great chat atmosphere. But for the first time ever, with XQC, he had both and was just unmatched. And still to this day, I think he's very unmatched. Can't forget about Erob and Darion drinking in their dorm, which made you feel like you were part of the friend group, which was really great. Poke's VR streams were really fun because they were very unpredictable in the sense where he would go and talk to a lot of antisocial gamers, and it was just really good content. Also, watching Wreckful just absolutely demolish the competition in WoW. Simple getting roasted by Freakazoid and ESEAS. Why are you bullying me? And then finally as well, just Old Forsen. The golden era of Twitch stopped as soon as Greek decided to ditch streaming in 2019 in order to work on his health. Oh, and as for Justin and Emmett, well, in 2014, they decided to shut down all their operations for Justin TV and decided to fully work for Twitch. And then as well, they sold Twitch for a tiny amount of $970 million to Amazon. Look, in the end, oh, no, no, Twitch no, 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 has worry, always been my go-to website after school, after work. I unironically spend three yeah. hours of my time yeah, every day yeah, on Twitch. Yeah, exactly. It's a website where I've been able to laugh a lot. It's the website that has taught me how to play games correctly. Twitch has always been the go-to platform whenever new games would release. It's the only platform where I've always been able to laugh at streamers and with streamers. It's where I've been able to be a part of multiple communities, whether normie, not normie, big or small, I've always felt like I've had a place with Twitch in any of these communities. Twitch has been a website where I've been able to meet online friends with different lifestyles at me, but we all have one common central point, which is enjoying a streamer together. As cringe as this sounds, Twitch has given me the possibility to meet online people, online friends in real life, where in the past they were just a username in a chat room, and I've gotten to meet them in a social real life setting which I'm now proud to call them my friends. And finally, 
Twitch.tv has helped me get my dream job of becoming an editor for a big Twitch streamer. And honestly, it's been, it's been a blast and I'm excited for a lot more years of doing this. Again, as cringe as this sounds, without Twitch, I don't really know where I would be in life. I don't know what I would be doing after work. I, I just honestly, Twitch is just really more than just a website to me.